Despite the anticipation Taylor allowed to build for the rest of the afternoon, the drive back to Leonard's condo proved to be entirely anticlimactic. He seemed distracted and spent the whole trip absently typing something on his cell phone. Thanks to the delights of LA traffic, it took twice as long to drop him off at home than it did to pick him up, and even longer for Taylor to make the trip to her apartment once he'd bid her a distracted goodnight. It was dark by the time she stumbled, exhausted, into her apartment, and painfully close to midnight once her takeout had arrived and she'd caught up on the work she'd missed thanks to the day's excitement. After hitting send on her final email, she wandered, bleary-eyed into her small kitchen, ready to set up her coffee maker for the morning. It brought her face to face with the calendar stuck on the front of the refrigerator, where a bright red arrow and a doodle of the devil reminded her that not only was tomorrow the annual team's day at work, but that she was on the hook for snacks. Taylor dragged her hand over her face and tried not to cry out in frustration. It was fine. She didn't need to sleep. Sleep was for losers. The contents of her pantry offered only the bare essentials, enough to whip up a premix of lemon bars that ended up only a little singed when she shoved them in the oven, then promptly fell asleep on the couch. She trimmed the edges. They'd pass inspection. Barely. It wasn't like she was known for her culinary prowess. The time between falling face first into her bed and her alarm screaming obnoxiously in her ear was offensively short. By the time she dragged herself out of bed, downed her first coffee of the day and changed for the gym, she was giving serious consideration to quitting her job, changing her name, and finding a cave in the woods to hibernate for a year. While Leonard's quiet, distant attitude from the previous evening would have been welcome that morning, he seemed to be back on form when she picked him up. He greeted her with a sly smile, his hands tucked in the pockets of his soft blue hoodie he'd pulled on over shorts. Not a morning person, he asked her, climbing into the passenger seat. Taylor grunted. Anything before 6 a.m. is still night. He glanced over at the box of lemon bars on the back seat. Did you bake for me? I baked for the team, she said, turning out into the morning rush. I noticed you didn't. I wasn't aware I had to, he said, with a look of genuine surprise. She glanced at him from the corner of her eye. And this is why you need a PA. That's what I've got you for. Taylor didn't trust herself to respond with anything resembling politeness, so turned up the radio instead. The blast of perky pop was completely inappropriate for her half-awake brain, but she'd happily endure it just for the way Leonard's expression twisted in distaste. To his credit, he did obey the sacred tenant of letting the driver pick the music. He drummed his fingers lightly on the passenger door, his gaze on the crawling traffic. So I'm guessing the baking is for the annual team day? You guess correctly, Taylor said, pursing her lips. Not a fan. She glanced at him in surprise. It just feels performative, that's all. Like when Mike used to make us work 16-hour days for a crunch, then bought one pizza for the whole department to share. If you want us to bond, maybe don't make us go battle royale over a slice of pepperoni. I think team activities are supposed to be a little more collaborative than that, he chuckled. But remind me not to ask you to pick us up pizza for lunch. The people who are going to bond have already bonded. Everyone else is either going to get aggressively competitive or flake in the first round so they can bunk off for the day. It's a huge drain on resources and productivity. Which are you? Leonard asked. Aggressively competitive or a flake? If you have to ask that, then you're not as observant as I thought you were. She told him seriously. He threw his head back and laughed, the corners of his eyes crinkling and the stern set of his mouth twisting into something that reflected the warmth in his voice. Taylor quickly decided that any lingering attention she paid to his lips was entirely to blame on sleep deprivation. She continued to tell herself the same thing once they hit the gym, doubling down when the thin fabric of his shirt stretched tightly across his biceps. She spotted him on the mats, focusing on her counts with a furious intensity 
She refused to let drop until they'd wrapped, showered, and he was safely behind his designer-suited armor of boss. Once they arrived in the office, she remembered why she disliked annual team day so much. She'd lied to Leonard in the car. It was a massive drain on their time, especially when they were already overstretched. But it was fun. Or it used to be, before half the company decided they preferred to listen to gossip over experience. The M&Ms were on top form, greeting everyone who entered the building with beaming smiles, name badges, and colored stickers that they'd used to group everyone up once the event kicked off. They even managed to smile at Taylor, Nothing less than a nuclear explosion required to wipe their plastic smiles off their faces. She accepted her yellow sticker with the least aggressive expression she could muster. Director Wilson, Mandy beamed, welcome to your first annual team day. You strike me as a vermilion kind of man. She pressed a round sticker to the lapel of his suit. Taylor had at least brought her flats to wear for the day. He was apparently going to try and compete in hand-stitched brogues. Sucked to be him. Taylor deposited her offering of sad lemon bars on the table at the back of the room, with all the others, and joined Claire in the corner. Please, it's red, Claire grumbled, her own yellow sticker violently clashing with the fluffy purple shirt she was wearing. Taylor tried to suppress a smile. Technically, it's Cerise. Technically, it's a war crime. That suit probably cost more than my car. Claire drove a beat-up monstrosity that only ran thanks to duct tape and prayer. It absolutely cost more than her car. You ready for some Team Yellow shenanigans? Taylor asked, trying to summon up some enthusiasm. You sure you don't mean Team Celadon? That would be green, Taylor chuckled. It won her a teasingly severe look from Claire. And this, she said with an affected huff, is why you'll always be one of them. She waved a hand toward Mandy and Mike, who'd been joined by the hyper-enthusiastic events team. The small group all wore the same fixed smiles as they vied for Leonard's attention. Ouch, Taylor winced. The room fell silent as Leonard took center stage. He was wearing that charismatic smile again, utterly confident in his authority as he addressed the gathered employees. Thank you for joining us today, he said. Claire leaned in to whisper in Taylor's ear. Does he not understand the meaning of mandatory? Taylor hid her grin behind her hand, then kicked Claire in the foot. Leonard thankfully didn't seem to hear them. I'm sure we're all going to have a lot of fun and... As an incentive, I'm offering up a day's paid vacation and a boon of your choice. His smile turned mischievous. Within reason, of course. That could be another half day's vacation, contribution for training, extra budget for a project. The world's your oyster. He clapped his hands together and met Taylor's gaze across the room. She didn't blink. Challenge accepted. Her project didn't have a budget yet, but that was about to change. The day was divided into two halves. The morning was given over to team-building exercises, which was corporate's label for the complete free-for-all that was unleashed when every department in the company made a mad dash for the best activities on offer. Taylor and Claire joined up with the rest of Team Yellow, two IT techs who'd never left the basement, Jules from events, and Dave, Taylor's mortal enemy from accounts. They missed the more sedate Two Truths and a Lie challenge and torn between the choice of having to pry a conversation out of Dave or struggle through a more physical activity. They end up in a race around the building with Team Red. I don't run, Jules offered apologetically. The guys from IT shook their heads in unison and Dave looked like he'd throw up the second anyone forced him to undertake any kind of physical activity. No, Claire said categorically. (laughs) Not in these shoes. Looks like it's you and me, Miss Yates, Leonard greeted Taylor as she took up the start position. As if her team were ill-suited for sports, his were somehow even worse. Both Mandy and Mike had put themselves in Team Red. Hope I didn't wear you out this morning. 
Taylor forced herself not to look at anyone but Leonard. Let people gossip. They already were. In your dreams, sir. Leonard had removed his suit jacket and loosened his blue silk tie. He rolled the sleeves of his shirt up and brought Taylor back to the same distracted headspace she'd been in at the gym. The whistle sounded. He darted off seconds before her, faster than anyone had any right to be in those shoes. Damn it, Taylor muttered, sprinting after him. He had the head start and longer legs to his advantage. She had familiarity with the building. The task was to get up to the executive offices and snag a token from the front desk and head down to the basement and pick up the second token. Leonard headed for the main stairs. She didn't. If she ran down the corridor on the second floor, she could break out into the service staircase and bypass the front lobby and avoid having to double around the building to get down to IT. Technically, the route was longer, but running, she could maybe shave a good 30 seconds off her time. There were two tokens waiting on the front desk when she reached it. She'd made it there first. Leonard raced through the double doors just as she was headed back down the service staircase. She waved at him on the way down. Maybe not the best move, but worth it for the look on his face. Victory looked like a certainty as she made it down into the basement, right up until she took a corner too fast, stumbling into the wall and went down on her ankle. Hard. It was sloppy something she'd never have done if she weren't so tired, and her shout was as much from frustration as it was pain. A moment later, strong arms swept her off the crumpled heap she'd landed in and set her gently down on the stairs. There was a faint flush to Leonard's cheek as he knelt before her. Easy, he said, his strong hand curling around her throbbing ankle. Can you move it? Taylor obligingly circled her ankle. Her foot gripped loosely in his hand. The pain made her wince, but it was already starting to fade. A sprain, maybe, but unlikely to be a break. Good, Leonard praised. Can you put any weight on it? Yeah, Taylor said, before even trying. She pushed herself up, clutching at the railing for balance, and tentatively rested her foot on the ground. The first attempt to put weight on it ached, but the second wasn't as bad. Leonard rocked back on his heels and smiled at her. You had me worried for a second. Afraid to lose your sparring partner? She asked, grimacing. Ow! He offered her his arm. After a moment of hesitation, she took it. They slowly made their way over to the elevator. Don't forget your token, she reminded him. Let's call it a draw. Leonard suggested. Be a bad look if I left you here all injured and helpless just to win a race. He laughed when she shoved him with her elbow. Okay, first of all, I'm not helpless, and I'm not going to stop pulling my punches next time we're in the ring. Sure you are, he teased. And second of all, she ignored him and continued, you don't want to give yourself two days paid vacation? I don't do vacations, he sniffed. Of course you don't. He kept his hand on hers the entire trip up in the elevator, only to let it go once the doors slid open and let them out. With neither of them having completed the challenge, a draw was declared. The verdict was delivered with a number of wide-eyed, suspicious looks from many of their colleagues. God, could this get any worse? The answer was yes, very much so. Leonard insisted she get her ankle checked by the company medic, meaning she missed the next two activities and ended the morning with zero wins to her name. There would be no way she could catch up now, even if she won all of the afternoon's events. Seeing Team Red proudly celebrate their wins in the following activities only added insult to injury. Then it came time for lunch. Despite her promise to share lunch with Leonard, she hadn't really anticipated having to do so in front of half of the company. On the plus side, she didn't have to venture in search of something to eat. The lunch was catered, with everyone's baked goods serving up as desserts. Thanks to some real sadism from jewels and events, they all had to stand up and introduce their offerings for consideration of another prize. Taylor didn't even try and pretend she had a chance of winning that one. 
but she was at least relieved to see Sarah and her epic cheesecake slices win. There were some truly impressive culinary masterpieces to choose from, which didn't explain why Leonard, when presented with the choice, picked one of her lemon bars. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you, sir. Mike laughed, a nasty smile on his face. Taylor reluctantly agreed with him. Seriously, she nodded. Maybe stick to the muffins? Leonard picked up a bar and examined it critically. I'm sure they're not that. He took a bite, chewed slowly, then set the remainder of the bar down with exaggerated care. Several people around the table started to laugh. Taylor, who was the first to admit she was a terrible baker, flushed with painful embarrassment. I did warn you, she muttered. They were, um, different, he offered diplomatically. He dropped his voice low enough so that only she could hear him. There had to be something you were bad at. Taylor stared at him in disbelief. There was plenty she was bad at. She nearly broke an ankle going around a corner. Shame you're not going to win today, he continued. I had higher expectations. That was both of them. I'll get an Uber home tonight, he said. It should have been a reward, a break from her relentless schedule and a chance to claw back some of her day. Instead, it felt like a failure. <laughs> 